these pieces are really a record of my creative thinking in terms of clay over 45 years. And when I look at a certain piece, I can remember what inspired me to make it, what idea came to me, where I was. I think of them as my tracks. They're my footprints through all these years. I'd like to talk about these two pieces which were fired in a workshop in Napa a number of years ago. And this one was fired in a wood kiln. Uh, you can see on the bottom the marks from the, the little wads that you place under a pot in a wood kiln to prevent the ash from causing the piece to stick to the shelf. And I include it because I think it's just a sweet little teapot. There's something very tender and personal about it. It's like if you were going to have a, a special cup of tea on a rainy afternoon, you might want to have it from this teapot. And this one was fired at the same workshop, and something happened which was very unusual in this piece. Uh, first of all, it's a, a classic vase uh, that has an impression of an ancient cylinder seal going around the circumference. But what happened with this piece was that uh, in the firing of it, and this was in a soda kiln, not a wood kiln, the glaze from the inside seeped out and, and started to color the clay in a very unusual way. So... This is a special piece for me. You could call it cylinder seal vase. It's a cylinder seal that impressed the clay here. But because of the way the, uh, the glaze seeped out from the inside, the figures are very visible on this piece. For many years, I've collected antiquities. And among the ones that I collect are cylinder seals from ancient civilizations. This one, which I use to decorate the vase, is made of hematite. And it's from the Assyrian culture. It's probably around 4,000 years old. My work is very connected to the ancient world in both form and surface and intention. This is a, an older piece. Uh, it's a Raku fired piece. I made it at a Raku studio in Oakland, maybe 25 years ago. And the handles are impressed with one of the cylinder seals from my collection. And this is a particularly wonderful one that has uh, lions uh, in the, the scene it's a frieze of warriors with lions. And the crackle on the piece is a natural product of the firing process. In Raku firing, the piece is taken out of the kiln while it's still very hot, and it's plunged into a, uh, a reducing atmosphere, a trash can we used, uh, which has newspapers, leaves, and the, the whole uh, fire that ensues uh, causes the glaze to crackle in this way, which is quite decorative. And this is the cylinder seal that I used. It's made of lapis lazuli. It's probably about 4,000 years old. Here are two very classic forms influenced by uh, the ceramic traditions of China. Uh, in my left hand, uh, a piece which is uh, a bottle form. Uh, it's glazed with actually a Japanese glaze, uh, a green oribe glaze. And I like the way uh, the glaze dripped on the piece. It was high fired in my gas kiln to about 2360 degrees. In my right hand is a vase which is uh, very classic in form, uh, decorated with these little uh, balls of clay around uh, the neck. And this is glazed with a celadon glaze and fired 
uh, in my gas kiln to a very high temperature. This is a bowl, which I call a pouring bowl because it has a very wide mouth here. You could use it in the kitchen for mixing and pouring. Um, it's glazed with an ash glaze, which I made in my studio from uh, cherry wood that I cured and burned and used in making an ash glaze. And I like the, the dripping patterns that occur at high heat in the gas kiln. This is a, a large bowl made of porcelain and glazed with micelladon glaze. I have been a great fan of calligraphy for many, many years and have visited some of the great collections in Japan. Uh, and I decided that I would do my own calligraphy on this piece. And what it entailed was taking uh, a ceramic needle and almost doing some electric writing, just letting the hand go. And it was very satisfying and uh, the celadon glaze sinks into the uh, pattern of the calligraphic work and I think it makes a, a very subtle and yet energizing uh, effect. This is a porcelain bowl which is called an altered form and whereas it's very satisfying to throw on the wheel a beautiful symmetrical form. Sometimes you just like to play around with it a little bit. And so what I did with this piece was to make the wheel move very slowly and take a rib and just sort of form, reform the piece on the wheel. And I call these my jazz pieces because there is a kind of rhythmic and musical quality to uh, the altering of the piece. Here's another kind of altered piece. The bowl was thrown on the wheel to be perfectly symmetrical. And then after it had stiffened a little bit, I used a finger inside the piece to create these little bulges. And it was a lot of fun to do. It, it makes the rim a very musical rim. Um, the glaze is a glaze that was a recipe of the great potter Toshiko Takeizu. I took a workshop from her in the 70s. And I love the quality of uh, the shell-like quality. It's almost like a seashell. This is a piece that I made about 10 years ago. It's uh, a cylinder shape, which I tooled with a wooden comb again to enliven the surface. It was then glazed with a uh, green Arebe glaze. And what I like about this piece is that it almost looks like it's malachite. It, it looks like a mineral from the earth. And as the clay comes from the earth, uh, it's very satisfying to achieve something uh, that reflects that nature of the material. This is a, a piece I call my deer head pieces. Uh, my studio in Mill Valley is nestled among redwood trees and there are deer outside my studio and I like to observe them when I take a break from working at the wheel. And so I decided to incorporate their heads as uh, uh, sort of ceremonial parts of some of my pieces, and uh, this is a piece that was glazed with a, a traditional Japanese temoku kiln, uh, glaze, and then uh, sprayed with some ash from uh, firewood, which I burned. So this is the largest of the deer head vessels that I've made, and I am very fond of this one. It's black mountain clay, uh, and on the piece I just splashed a little ash, just flicking it with my fingers. And I think of it as a very ceremonial piece uh, honoring the, the majesty of these deer in my garden. As I work in both porcelain and stoneware, I've 
enjoyed uh, making deer head vases out of both materials. Uh, these are porcelain clay glazed with ash glaze from the cherry tree in my yard. Occasionally I get asked to make a, a burial urn and most recently I decided to make a series of burial urns out of the Black Mountain clay, uh, decorating them with little handles, a, a lid which comes off, and uh, splashing a little ash on the side of it. I do like making these ceremonial vessels with the, the rather complex feet and the handles uh, which animate the form. Uh, this handle was impressed with a woodblock from India, a beautiful bird, which I then painted with a white slip. And I had no idea that it was going to come out exactly like this. Uh, the first time I was so surprised and very pleased. It has a kind of ancient feeling, almost of old fresco. So over the years, most potters make thousands and thousands of cups. And I take the making of a cup very seriously. I take it as really a small sculpture and a very intimate one, because we start our day with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee frequently, and it's a really meditative experience, and I think that the cup